good morning. It's good to see you all here. I'm glad uh, Thanksgiving went well enough. Nobody ate too much food. They couldn't make it to church on Sunday. That's good. Um, I hope you had wonderful Thanksgivings. And if you traveled, you had a good time with friends. Uh, we did. We were gone all week. Uh, helped my parents move and then um, spending Thanksgiving with them. And it was just a good week. Um, it's good to be home, though, right? Um, now we kind of move into the Advent season very quickly, um, and before we know it, it's going to be a new year. That's hard to believe. Um, as far as announcements goes, um, in your bulletin, you've got an insert. Um, this is something exciting. I hope that you will be a part of this. This is for uh, all our church family. Um, <coughs> this will be kind of our last Wednesday night get-together. Um, and on the back of that, it's got your family name, the number attending, and we're going to do uh, finger foods uh, that evening. And so if you're going to bring a finger food, what you're bringing. So I hope that you'll plan on being a part of this time. I, I don't know what Holly Ann's got in, in store for our escape room, but I'm excited about this. Um, I think it'll be a good family uh, event for us. So I hope you'll put that down, plan on being a part of that, bring your favorite finger food Turn that in to the offering plate, or you can put it up here at the end of the service so we can get it, and I'll, I'll make sure Holly Ann gets those um, turned in. Um, also, just a couple notes about Advent. Um, we're going to be decorating our um, Chrismon tree after this uh, lunch today, so um, as soon as, if you want to help be a part of that, we've got to put the tree up and... And we're going to do as much decorating as we can, uh, do the heavy stuff first. Um, we're going to try to do that before choir practice for the cantata, which is at 3. Um, so if you get done with lunch, you want to come be a part of that, we hope that you'll come and, and be a part of that time together um, here in the sanctuary. We'll meet at 3 o'clock. Um, also, I want to make a note, Christmas Eve will be on Sunday this year. And of course, we'll have our normal Christmas Eve service in the evening at 6 o'clock. But for those of you who might be going out of town or being with family at Christmas Eve and, and won't be able to come back for the Christmas Eve service, our 8.30 service will be doing Christmas communion, Christmas Eve communion as well. So that will give um, people an opportunity to have communion um, early if you'd like that. And then if you, if you are going to be able to come back, you can do both if you'd like to do that. Um, but that, that's totally up to you. But I just wanted to let you know there is an opportunity for you to take Christmas Eve communion. Um, and that will be at the 8.30 service. Um, and then as far as in the bulletin, you'll see the note there about Angel Tree. Um, that will be ready next Sunday. Um, and the information is there about the tags and those things and when they're due back. Um, so I hope you'll uh, pay attention to that. And then you'll see all the things that are going on for the Methodist women. Um, they've got a lot of different events coming up pretty quick. Uh, we hope that you can be a part of those as you can. Um, I'm excited about this season we're, we're entering into. Um, this Wednesday coming up will be kind of our last normal Wednesday. Um, the adult group will watch the Advent uh, Chosen episode, if you'd like to be a part of that after we eat uh, supper. And then our children and youth will have their normal activities um, going on. And then, of course, the next Wednesday will be our final Wednesday with the escape room and our kind of party together, so I hope you'll, you'll be a part of those things as they come. Um, there will be more information about other things coming up during this season. We'll, we'll, we'll give you that as we get closer. All right, with that being said, let's stand and invite God to be a part of our time together. <clears throat> let's pray. Heavenly Father, we have made it through the season of Thanksgiving, and we understand that, that Thanksgiving isn't just a season, it is a state of life for us and as, as your people, and, and we are thankful. I hope, um, God, that we express that thankfulness adequately um, this, this season we just went through. Today is Christ the King Sunday. It's the Sunday where we recognize um, who you are. Um, you are the Lamb of God, but you are also King of Kings. And um, Lord, I just thank you for that truth today. Um, as we enter into this place today, God, I just pray that all those burdens that we carry, those things that are heavy on our hearts, we'd be able to lay down before you. And God, in these moments, we'd be able to hear you speak clearly to us. Um, and that as we think about the coming of the Christ child, the hope that he brings, that that hope would penetrate our hearts and lives. And we could leave this place today filled with that hope. May all we do and say in these moments bring glory and honor to your name. 
We love you, Father, and we thank you so much for your love for us. In your name we pray. Amen. As we come now for a time of prayer, um, I do want you to please remember Miss Mary Williams' family. Miss Mary passed away this morning. Um, she uh, had gotten sick over kind of the last week and went to the hospital and um, thought it was one thing. And then they found out that she had uh, leukemia, um, didn't know what type of leukemia she had. Went saw her yesterday. And I was just really surprised when Rich called me this morning and said that she had passed this morning. Um, she got up, and they put her back in bed. She closed her eyes, and she went to see Jesus. I don't know of a better way to go than that. And uh, So many of you know Miss Mary. Um, if you're part of the food pantry, you know that she's always been part of that, connected, and the way she would help others. And, and uh, So we'll give you funeral arrangements as soon as we know those. But please be praying for... Rich and Miss Marilyn and their family, they took care of Miss Mary for a long, long time, and um, she'll be missed as, as part of our church family for sure. 
So please keep that family in your prayers. I know we have many others that we're thinking about, praying for people fighting cancer and, and other issues. Um, um, this season is a, is a special season for us, but it's also hard. It's difficult um, when you deal with losses. And uh, some of us have lost loved ones, and, and every holiday brings about an empty space. And I always try to lift that up because I know for my family, uh, it, it, it's present there. So um, let's, let's remember those folks this season that we're kind of entering into. Um, I know many of you have needs. I hope that you will take the uh, bookmark that we've put in our uh, bulletin, and I hope that you'll fill out any need that you have. Turn that in during the offering time, or at the end of the service, you can put it in the prayer box, or you can put it in the offering plate as you're leaving. Um, we are a church that's faithful to be praying. We have a prayer team that gets this list every week, and they are praying over whatever needs we have. If you're here today and you have an unspoken need that you don't want anybody to know about, just check that box. That's all you have to do, and we'll be praying for that unspoken need. Whether you put your name on it or not, we'll be praying for an unspoken need. So please fill that out. Please turn that in and let us be praying for you um, for whatever it is that you need. We are a family of God. Amen. And that's what we do, and that's what this time is all about. So as we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, um, please do remember this is a, 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 a collective body prayer. So this is not to hear the preacher pray. This is for you to pray along with me as together we lift our prayers to the Lord. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I love this old hymn we just sang, Come, ye thankful people, come. Um, that song speaks of when you return and gather the harvest, when you return and gather your children. Father, I am so thankful for that truth today that um, there is a life beyond this earthly life that we live, and there is an eternity that is promised to us that is forever. And today, God, as we come before your throne, we acknowledge um, the hurts and the pains that each one of us carries, the burdens that we hold close to our hearts, uh, the concerns we have for, for our family and for our loved ones and for community loved ones and other things that we know are going on um, in, in, in our area around us. Lord, we also see things that are going on on the news and in other countries, and we understand that in uh, Jerusalem and, and the Middle East, and then also in Ukraine and Russia, Thanksgiving was different for a lot of people. And Lord, I just pray that we would not look past others' needs, Lord, as we um, see all that's going on. But instead, we would be moved to pray for people um, all over the world and the circumstances that we see um, that need your hand involved in those things. Father, today I am thankful for a heart uh, that I see in the life of this church, a heart of love and a heart that is bent towards you. I just pray, God, that as we move into this Advent season together, that the hope of the Savior would fill us once more. And God, we could move into our areas that you've placed us, our work, our school, wherever we may be. And we'd be able to shine with that hope, God, so others can see the light of Christ, which comes to the world um, a world of darkness and, and brings hope and love and, and peace and joy, God. We thank you so much for the truth of what this season means for us. Be with us now and the rest of this service as we think about Christ the King. Um, it's hard to believe this is the last day of the Christian calendar. Uh, we start new next week. Lord, we, we end with the image of Jesus not as the Lamb, but as the King of Kings who returns not as the Savior, but as the judge. Help us to understand that imagery, Lord, as we think about who you are and, and all that you do and how much you love your children. Thank you, Father. Again, may all we do and say in these moments bring glory and honor to your name. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Worship the King, as Lee was talking about. This is Christ the King Sunday, and um, so we're going to sing. This is a, a big song. It's on page 11, and it's uh, be on your uh, screen. We'll sing all these verses.
Heavenly Father, we do thank you, God, for all the blessings that you've given to us as a people. Uh, Lord, we just left Thanksgiving, and I hope that as we sat around our tables, we saw all that we were thankful for and all the blessings that you'd given to us. And God, we just love you, and we're just so grateful for your uh, goodness to us. I'm thankful for your generosity, for the generosity of your people. Lord, I pray you'd bless these gifts that, that your people give back to you now. Use them for the work of your kingdom through us, your church. In your name we pray. Amen. At this time, the kids are going to come forward for a cup ministry. Um, I do want to make a note as the kids are coming. Um, we are going to be doing a cup ministry on Christmas Eve day. Um, and we're going to do a special uh, offering that day for, uh, have, me and Holly and will talk about it, but um, maybe we can do something for backpack blessing or something like that. But just to note, we will be doing it in December. Um, kids will get their cups. Miss Holly Ann's got them. Go up there, Dakota.
All right, as we kind of close up our cup ministry, a couple thoughts. The upstairs didn't get left out this time. You had like six kids up there, so that was good. Um, so y'all were good. And I think we all know uh, who Miss Ruckle's granddaughter is. Uh, the one with the most money up here. That is, uh... Thank you guys so much. Um, now y'all can go back for the kids' time if you'd like. Connect kids. If you want to go back and play. Benjamin. It's good to be the dad and the pastor. I can tell him from the pool. All right. Today is Christ the King Sunday, which is interesting because we kind of go through the whole year. We start at Advent for the Christian calendar, and we end on this, this big day. And so the candle is lit for, for the king. Um, turn in your Bibles. You can go ahead and turn there to Matthew 25, 31 through 46. Now, we begin the year with the baby in the manger, which is the season we're about to go into. We all see this image of Jesus, the child in the manger. He's safe, um, almost um, brings us to him. He's adorable. He's a baby. Um, we see this baby grow into a man between 3 and 30. We kind of lose track of him. We see him a little bit, maybe at the age of 10 to 12, um, at the uh, temple with his parents. And then he kind of reemerges. And when he reemerges, we have the baptism um, in, in the wilderness experience. And then he begins his ministry. And he, he tells us parables. And he, and he shares the message of hope and of the kingdom of God. And, and he shares the message of salvation. And, and he is the Lamb of God. And, of course, the Lamb is, is one of the highest prized sacrifices inside of the temple and this image of Jesus the Lamb is one we hold on to, one we are attracted to, one that we are so thankful for when we see the image of atonement and that Jesus had to die to squelch the atonement of our sin. And so Jesus willingly lays his life down for you and me. And with that act, the Lamb of God is slain. The blood of the uh, spotless Lamb washes our sins white as snow. And so we have forgiveness, and, and what was broken in the garden is restored. And we have this connection with God that we have lost because of sin. And the Old Testament is a story of us trying to get back to God, and, and it's a story of, of God paving the way for his people. And then the New Testament is the story of Jesus and the early church and how that church grew. But then we kind of come to the end of all of this. And what is our image? Our image is what we see here in Matthew. An image of not the lamb, but the king. The king of kings. And, and on this last day of the Christian year, we need to understand and we need to forget that at the other side of the lamb of God is the king of kings. He will not come in on a little donkey. He will come in on a white horse. And he will be bold and he will be strong and there will be no weakness. And in that moment, that is when the king comes to judge. We don't want to see this image. We don't like this image because this allows us to understand there is a way that is right and there is a way that is wrong. And for children of the living God, when Christ comes into us, we are new creations. And we are different people. And we're going to see in our passage today, this life lived out. And how this life lived out isn't something that we, we try to do. It's just who we are. But friends, never forget that he is king of kings. And he sits on the throne. And the lamb that was slain was slain for you and for me. But that's not happening again. That's already happened. Let's turn to our passage this morning. We need to know what this king is all about. Matthew 25, 
Verses 31 through 46. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. And all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one another, as the sheep separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on the right, goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed of my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did it to one of the brothers of mine, even the least of them, you did it for me. So let's stop right there for a moment. So, first of all, we see the king comes. And there will be a moment when he returns in all of his glory. And he will be King Jesus. And he will be filled with glory. And the holiness and the radiance of who he is will shine forth. The image we have is going to be much different than the image we see of the Lamb of God. As Jesus coming into Jerusalem before he's crucified. Um, Turn to your Bibles to Revelations chapter 19. I want you to get an image of Jesus because this is the image that is coming. They make this up. This is what God's Word says. This is Revelations 19, verse 11. The coming of Christ. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat upon it called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and wages war. And his eyes are a flame of fire, and upon his head are many diadems. And he has a name written upon him which no one knows except himself. And he is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which are in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, were following him on white horses. And from his mouth comes a sharp sword, so that with it he may smite the nations." And he will rule them with a rod of iron, and he treads the winepress of fierce wrath of God, the Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Now, is that image different than the image of the Savior coming in the gates of Jerusalem on a little donkey? It is. But it's the same God. And we need to understand. We take for granted so often who Jesus is. And in so many ways, I would say we disrespect who he is. Because he is not just the Lamb of God that was slain. He is the King of kings. And there will be a day when all these will bow before him. Will you want to or not? And this is the image of the King that comes. Now for us who are his children, there should be no fear. Because we are his children. But friends, if you do not know him, on that day you will be afraid. We like this picture, this this picture of Jesus with rainbows and butterflies. But I'm telling you, that's not the image that comes to us in the return of glory. For me, when I think about that image, I think of a God that loved me so much that he did give his life for me. And when that image comes of him on a white horse and all hosts of heaven on their white horses, I'm going to be excited. Because I'm his. But for many, they will not be excited. Because the time they had, they wasted. The calling of God in their life, they didn't answer This is not a message of fear. It's just a matter of truth. And I think it's important for us to see how closely connected the end of the year is with the beginning of the year. 
from the king of kings to the child in the manger. And every year that comes, we have more time. But there will be a day when there will be no more years. And he will return in all of his glory. We also see in this passage that he's king. The book stops with who? With him, right? Now, for some of us, we understand kind of this imagery. Um, it, 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 when I was growing up, the buck stopped with my dad, right? In my house, the buck stops with their mom. I mean, that's where the buck stops. <laughs> but when we think about being a Christian, the buck doesn't stop with your pastor. Doesn't start, stop with your pope. There's only one place it stops. And that's with the king. And I'm telling you, the king is sitting on the throne right now. He has not been moved from it. He is the king and nothing will take him off. And right now he is waiting because he is a loving God that wants as many as can to come. But there will be a day when he will return. And that day, it'll be too late. He is King Jesus. Next Sunday, we'll look at the baby in the manger again. Because we're going through another year. And that's hope. And if you're here today and you don't have Jesus in your life, that's hope for you. Because there's still time. But we need to understand who he is now. The king of kings. <clears throat> so, this idea of inheritance. And, and that's good news for you and for me. And so we have this moment from verse 32 through, down through 41. Thir verse 40. Where he kind of separates out. right? Those who will inherit the kingdom. Those who followed after Jesus. Those who were new creations in Christ. And how does this new creation live? What's the lifestyle of a, of a new creation in Christ? Well, I think it's a lot of things. But what the word of God points out is this transformation is found in what? How we treat people. How we love like Jesus loved. Listen to it again, friends. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. The king on the white horse comes, and this is what he says as he begins to separate. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, you invited me in. Naked. You covered me. Sick, you visited me. I was a prisoner, and you came to me. And what I find amazing about this passage is that these folks, these lambs, these sheep that have been separated out, they're going, when did we do that? When did we see you like that? When did, you know, if... And the king says, when you did this for the least of these, you did it for me. Friends, these people have no idea that they were doing it for Jesus. Because you see, if Jesus would have come and said, hey, if you do this, then, then sure, we're going to do it for Jesus, right? You know, it's like somebody asks you to do something, like, uh, but then they say, hey, this is for so. Oh, okay, I'll do it, right? That's an important person. I'll do it for them. They didn't know it because it was just a part of their life. It's who they were. And what defines us as God's children is the way we live our life. And what I find interesting in this passage is that it doesn't say anything in here about how good you were. It doesn't say anything in here about how much you knew of the Bible. It didn't say anything about if you sang worship songs great or how you sang them. Friends, this was all about the transformation of who we were, who we are. These righteous, and this word righteous, taking it back 
to the, to the Greek says this, to show the root word, innocent, holy, just, meet, and right. Friends, the transformation of being righteous is the idea that we stand in the righteousness of God. So it's not about how perfect we are. It's about the transformation of who we are and how we love people. Even in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ to people who are lost, there's no judgment in that. It's simply saying, hey, this is, this is what we believe and we want to share it with you. And if you accept it, then that's fine. And if not, that's fine. We love you either way. That I love, that I've shared the good news of Jesus with, that have not accepted him. And it breaks my heart to think of them passing without knowing Jesus. But I've not stopped being their friend. I've not stopped trying to share the good news. But I've also said it, it's in your hands. It's out of mine. You and I can't make anyone follow after Jesus. That's a decision between them and him. The only person you can deal with is you and where you stand with him. But I love the idea that it's how we treat people. So let me ask you, how are you treating people? When there's a need, do you reach out and fulfill the need? When you see somebody hurting, are you there? If somebody is thirsty, do you give them something to drink? That's all about you and me and how we live our life. And when we see a need, do we meet that need? Are we there? I'll tell you, many of us may not be able to go to prisons, but you can help with Angel Tree. That's a ministry for people in prison. Maybe you can't, you know, go to a food bank somewhere, but you can maybe come to our food bank. Help those who are thirsty, those who are hungry. You can be a part of our prayer team and pray for those who are sick, who are in need. There's ways we can help be the people that God's called us to be. But I'm telling you, we don't do that so that we can say, man, i got to work at the food pantry so I don't go to hell. No, that's not it. It's a part of who we are. That's just who I am. I can't help it. My Savior has done so much for me. He has transformed me in such a way that I want to love like he loves. I want to be the person he was and follow after him. I want to follow his ways. I want to follow his word. I want to be the man he was. Knowing I'm human and I'll never be that. But oh, that he would change me in such a way that I could love through sanctification like he loves. And make a difference in someone's life. So we have this picture of the righteous. And the righteous get eternal life. Those who are made right in him. Their joy is eternal life with him. And oh if it only stopped. Right? But this passage is a passage of the king separating. There are sheep and there are goats. Now, I don't know why the goats got the bad side. I know Larry's probably frustrated with that. He's got goats, you know. The goats are separated out on the left. I think it was telling a story. And the difference between sheep and goats, we understand, right? Sheep look different than goats do, even though they're kind of part of the same family. Humans kind of look similar. And we're all part of the same family. But there will be a day when the king, and it's the king. It's not the pastor. It's not you. It's the king who makes the separation. He's the judge. People ask me, do you think so-and-so went to heaven? I'm like, I don't know. Thank goodness it's out of my hands. I don't make that call. I hope so. With all that I am, I hope so. But that's not, that's not, it's above my pay grade. There's only one that makes that call, and his name's Jesus. And he is the king. And he does the separating. But listen, friends, there is a separation. Verse 41. Then he will also say to those on his left, Depart from me, accursed ones, into the eternal fire, which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. 
For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I was naked, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. They themselves also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did not do to the one of the least of these, you did not do it for me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. You see, if they would have known, maybe they would have done but it wasn't part of who they were. You see, this all goes back to the transformation of becoming a new creature. I hope today, as we kind of get ready to move into the new year, I hope what today does is allows you to take stock of your life. Because when Jesus comes into your heart, there is a transformation. Now, hear me, friends. What I'm saying doesn't mean that you immediately become perfect and never mess up again. What I'm saying is that there is a bent in your heart no more towards self, but towards him. Which means that in life you live differently. And and, and you've heard me say this before, but it's almost kind of like, the image of Jesus is, is, is burned on your glasses. And as a new creation in Christ, you put on your glasses. And what you see is him. And you can't think of anything else but to think of the filter of Jesus through everything you live your life in. Now, there are times as human beings when we take those glasses off and we do what we want to do. There are times as Christians we stumble into addiction And you can feel the word, whatever that addiction is. As a Christian, that doesn't mean, oh, now we're not a Christian anymore. We got this struggle. No, it just means we've got a struggle. And Jesus is with us to help us get through that struggle. But we are new. We go through that struggle with our glasses on, understanding that I've got this struggle. And I've got to get through it with him. He is going to get me through it. But when Jesus is with me, I have no fear of the king that returns. Because when the king that returns, he knows I'm his. Because he's the one that did the separating. So whenever you do a sermon like this, ultimately you're going to have people be like, man, that was a bummer, man. Thanks a lot. Debbie Downer, you got us, you know. It's supposed to be Christmas, and now we're thinking about this. Well, I think this sermon should make you very thankful for next week's. Amen? Because this is the end. We're not there yet. Amen? There's still time for your friends that are lost, there's still time for your family. That are lost. Listen, friends, you never know when you might speak to someone for the last time. I went to a funeral about, I don't know, maybe two or three weeks ago. Um, a woman who was uh, very close to them and Preston, where I served as their pastor, and her and her husband took me to Israel, and they will forever be, you know, just a part of my life and that experience that I had over there. She died. She had Alzheimer's. She was in her 90s, and I was able to go and be a part of that funeral. And she had all of her family there. Her son is a missionary in Mexico, and he has a lot of children, and he has a lot of grandchildren. And one of those grandsons was there with his wife, and he wore military. He's in the Army, um, and he wore his military outfit. And I got to see them and talk to them. I didn't know the, the grandkids as well, but just talked to them and And then this week, Friday, that young man was at a stop sign with his wife and a car plowed into the truck that was beside them and ran into them, flipped his truck. 
His wife was thrown, and she died on the scene. And he has been in the hospital. He's not awake. He doesn't know she's passed. It's looking like maybe he's going to make it, but he had severe injuries. And this family is left with this big explosion that they weren't, waiting, they weren't thinking about. It just happened, right? It's life. Like today, I would not have thought Miss Mary would have passed the day, but she did. And Miss Mary knows Jesus, and she's safe in his arms today. Amen? And, and this young man, I, I think, knew Jesus, but again, it's out of my hands. But, but we never know what tomorrow brings. Many of you may have heard of the accident that happened on Thanksgiving Day. Ten people in a van, head-on collision. Five people in the van died on scene. It's not to scare us, but it's just to say that this life we live is fragile. And we're not guaranteed tomorrow, church. None of us are. And so this sermon today should make us hope for the sermon next week. Because Christ does return as a child in the manger. He comes, he comes to us as the Lamb of God. He comes to us to save that which is lost. And so today, if you don't know Jesus, there's hope. You can accept him, and he will transform you from the inside out. And then on the day of his return, you do not have to be afraid. Because you're his. That's the story of today. Seeing the end so that next week at the beginning we see the hope in the Christ child that comes. Amen. So we're going to close out our service uh, with he is Lord. And, and I want to sing through this chorus as many times as we need to. The altar's open today. It always is. For you to come and pray. Maybe you're here today and you want to come down to the altar and you want to intercede on behalf of a loved one that you know doesn't know Jesus. Or maybe you yourself to come. You don't know Jesus. I don't know. Maybe you want to come and just talk to him. This Thanksgiving has been maybe tough. Maybe you've lost someone special. I don't know. But the altar's open. We're going to play He is Lord. And if some people come, then we'll keep singing it. If nobody comes, we'll, we'll stop. Um, but this Sunday reminds us who He is. So that when we look to next Sunday, we have hope. He hasn't returned yet. There's still time for people to come to know Jesus, the Lord and Savior. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I am thankful for this church. And I'm thankful that you're the king of kings, no one else. And I'm thankful that judgment is in your hands, it's not in ours. I just pray, Lord, that as we think about the return of Christ, the king of kings, that in this moment, Lord, we would find hope in next week. Hope in the child that comes to bring life in the darkness, to light the world with the hope of Christ. And Lord, for those who don't know him, have the opportunity to accept him into their hearts and lives so that he can transform them from the inside out. Remind us, Lord, that you are indeed king. Meet us here if we need to be here, Lord, at this altar. In your precious name we pray, amen.
You know, I can remember as a kid, um, my dad getting on to me. Have you ever had parents get on to you? Do you remember that? Do you remember the look in their eye? It's like, you know, I, I've learned how to do that now. I'm pretty proud of it. I can, I can do that for the twins and for, uh, um, you know, it's that look where you just kind of, you just kind of wave it off. You know they're staring right through you. Have you ever had somebody that wasn't your parent get on to you? kind of different, isn't it? Because you don't know that person. You know, just that strange person that gets on to you because you're doing something at the grocery store, right? Like, hey, and then if you're a parent and you see it happen, you're like, hey, that's my kid. I'll get on to him. Don't you get on to my kid. You know what I'm saying? Because we know with our parents, our mother and our father, there's love behind the correction, Right? As a child of the living God, we can feel the correction of God and conviction. And it sometimes it's not fun when you do something you shouldn't do and that thing inside of you says, why did you do that? that that's the correction of a loving father that loves you, right? See, being a child of God isn't about being perfect. I think it is about trying to love perfectly the way Jesus did. It's about seeing a need and doing it because it's just a part of who you are. Loving people because it's just a part of who you are. That's the mark of the sheep that God separates from the goats. And it is my prayer that all of you on that day will be ready. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we close out our time together, I am so thankful, so thankful that there's still time. As much as I want you to return, Lord, because I am sick of dealing with the sickness of this world. I'm sick of telling people I love goodbye. It's just, it's tough. And as much as I want you to return, I know there's still people who don't know you. And I, and I want them to know you before you do so they won't be lost. Lord, I just pray that for all of us, you would use us as lights in the darkness. That you would use us as examples to show people who Jesus is and the love that he has for the world. And Lord, I pray that as we think about this day, and maybe it causes us to tremble a little bit, that we turn our attention to next Sunday, the beginning of Advent, and the coming of the babe in the manger. We love you, Father, today, and we thank you for all of your love and blessings for us. Be with us this week. Use us as only you can. In precious name, amen. You are the best. <laughs>